Move on ending visas for Turkish citizens. The Commission wants member states to vote before the end of June to allow Turks on short-term leisure or business stays to enter the EU visa-free. The move is part of a package of incentives offered to Turkey to persuade Ankara to prevent migrants heading to Europe and to take in thousands who landed first in Greece. That deal has raised legal and moral questions as EU nations unable to agree among themselves on how to handle the refugee crisis chose instead to outsource it to Turkey, where almost three million refugees are staying, most of them people fleeing the war in Syria. I'm Charles de Ledesma. Germany raising its forecast for government tax income thanks to a healthy economy, low unemployment, bolstering its insistence that it can continue to avoid running up new debt. Today's estimate foresees a $798 billion tax take this year. That's a healthy increase over the previous estimate. News and analysis at townhall.com. The IRS plans to hire as many as 700 new employees to go after tax cheats. In a message to agency employees, IRS Commissioner John Koskinen says this will be the first significant hiring of enforcement personnel in more than five years. Koskinen says in his words, this is a good development for our tax system. And he adds, when you look at the IRS overall, every dollar invested in us returns at least $4 to the Treasury. Correspondent Linda Kenyon says the IRS has seen its staff shrink over the past few years as a result of budget cuts. Supporters of legalized marijuana say they've collected enough signatures to put the issue on the California ballot this November. It was pushed by a coalition that includes former Facebook President Sean Parker, backed by Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom as well, as, uh, in addition to the nation's leading marijuana advocacy groups. More on these stories at townhall.com. Good Italian food, daily specials, and a place people enjoy is Spaghetti Eddie's. Indulge in their mouth-watering pizza, pasta, subs, salads, appetizers, and desserts. Open seven days a week, log on to SpaghettiEddie'sPizzaCafe.com and visit them at Taylor Road and on Eden Way North in Chesapeake for lunch and dinner. Like them on Facebook. Italian food you can count on is at Spaghetti Eddie's. Mark your calendar for June 2nd to 5th as Saints Constine and Helen Greek Orthodox Church in Newport News presents the Newport News Greek Festival. Enjoy Greek food, desserts, beverages, music, dancing, arts and crafts, and much more. This is the signature event of the year in Hampton Roads with free admission and parking. Located at 60 Traverse Road off exit 258B on Route 17 in Newport News. For more, log on to NewportNewsGreekFestival.org. Opa! Mihogar is your restaurant for the finest Mexican cuisine in Hampton Roads. At Mihogar, everything is prepared fresh in a casual atmosphere. Enjoy traditional favorites such as quesadillas, tacos, burritos, and fajitas, as well as refreshing beverages. Mihogar has two locations, 4201 Granby Street in Norfolk and 801 North Battlefield Boulevard in Chesapeake. Call ahead at 640-7705. At Mihogar, there is something for everyone. Chesapeake, Virginia, 1650 AM WHKT presents Sports Scene. Sports Scene features local, regional, and nationally acclaimed guests and excellent interviews. Follow Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Vick and at GJBTV.com. Now here is Greg Vickavaris. And thank you very much, Ken Johnson. Glad you're with us. Kenny has to do a special work on the audio every week right here, Kenny, compared to back in the day when you first started in radio, my friend. Special work on the audio. You've lost me. On oh, the board. And, as in um, cleaning off the board and turning things off and all that sort of thing. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, always fun. it's always fun working with Kenny. We're going to have a lot of good stuff on what tees me off. This is Sports Scene, folks, presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. Browse, shop, visit. We have fun every week. Kind of your midweek oasis from life in general. Sports Scene presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. An interview show each Wednesday, noon to one. Also, sports highlights on NNPSTV.com. Tell your friends about 1650. Follow me at Twitter, Greg Bick, Sports Highlight, GJB TV, HR Online Mall Com. And of course, uh, subscribe on tunein.com right now. 
by typing WHKT in the search box. You can listen anywhere on your phone or your computer. Thank you to our military, a great guest lineup, Phil Wood, featured guest from Masson. We'll talk Orioles and Nationals. Sponsors on GJBTV.com homepage and marketplace sponsors. Cinco de Mayo, of course, tomorrow. And this is brought to you by Mi Casita Mexican Restaurant, which reminds you, Cinco de Mayo is tomorrow. Go to their two great restaurants in Virginia Beach of course, as well for Mi Casita. Phone line presented by GJBTV.com. Sponsors this month, Fink's Car Care, Spaghetti Yeti, Long's Billiards, Me Hogar, Newport News Greek Festival, and Newcastle. I want to welcome all of them each and every week. And, of course, uh, save the date. Coming up, the Norfolk Greek Festival, May 12th to May 15th, only eight days away. The Newport News Greek Festival is June 2nd to June 5th. We'll be talking NBA postseason, of course, uh, a lot going on, NHL playoffs, NBA postseason, Major League Baseball with Phil Wood, and, of course, a lot more going on. And, of course, next week we'll be talking to Kevin Sheehan from ESPN 980, getting the breakdown on the Redskins and their draft, and also Josh Norman. Testimonials from C.P. Shucker, Saffron, Outback Steakhouse, and Tokyo. A little sports business note, Kenny. Get on the microphone for a second, my friend. Of course, I know you love to do that anyway. The new mayor of Hampton, Donnie Tuck, was once the Washington Redskins PR director. In fact, that's when I first met him. So you know it's never easy beating an incumbent, and he handily beat Wallace yesterday in Hampton. Well, I guess it's that Redskins training. There you go. Also, were you surprised by the Norfolk mayor results? Alexander won very easily. no. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Okay, there's Ken Johnson's take right there. We'll get to what tees me off. Maybe even Kenny will tee me off a little bit later. This is Sports Scene. Stay tuned. We'll be back after these messages. Long's Billiards in Newport News is having a massive sale. Seven, eight, even nine foot tables are at an all time low price including Connolly, Brunswick and Olhausen. 1,000 pool cues in stock are up to 30, 40 even 50% off. Over 100 pool tables also on sale. When gone, they're gone forever. Log on to longsbilliards.com. Call 599-3661 and visit them at 9906 Wark Boulevard. Major clearance prices going on now at Long's Billiard. The place to go for U.S. rare coins is Newcastle Coins and Collectibles in Chesapeake. They specialize in U.S. and silver and gold coins and provide free verbal offers and are always buying U.S. rare coins. Newcastle Coins and Collectibles, 681 North Battlefield Boulevard in Chesapeake, across from Chesapeake General, open Tuesday through Saturday and always online at newcastlecollectibles.com. Call 757-609-3633, 757-609-3633 for Newcastle Coins and Collectibles. Mark your calendar for June 2nd to 5th as Saints Constantine and Helen Greek Orthodox Church in Newport News presents the Newport News Greek Festival. Enjoy Greek food, desserts, beverages, music, dancing, arts and crafts, and much more. This is the signature event of the year in Hampton Roads with free admission and parking. Located at 60 Traverse Road off exit 258B on Route 17 in Newport News. For more, log on to newportnewsgreekfestival.org. Listen to the USCAA Softball Selection Show on News Talk 1650 WHKT and on TuneIn.com on May 5th from noon to 1 p.m. Learn about the playing field for America's small colleges as we discuss the USCAA softball postseason. Follow the USCAA on Twitter and save the date for the USCAA Softball Selection Show on Thursday, May 5th from 12 noon to 1 p.m. on 1650 AM and on TuneIn.com. Catch up on archived editions of Sports Scene by going to gjbtv.com and clicking the YouTube image on the homepage. Now back to Sports Scene on 1650 AM and TuneIn.com. And welcome back to Sports Scene right here on News Talk 1650 up till 1 o'clock, the only remaining sports talk show from the game in Virginia Beach, of course, right here. Greg Bickaveras, glad you're with us. For more, go to my website, gjbtv.com. Hit the YouTube link for archive shows. You can also go to gjbtv.com for archive sports scenes from years past as well when I worked at the game. Big political, of course, night last night with Trump winning. And, of course, it looks like he's got that. It looks like Clinton's locked up. So 
we always break a little bit about news, too, but we're going to talk sports, of course. This is Sports Scene with uh, Phil Wood. We've had him on Sports Scene several times before. You see him on Masson. You hear him on the radio as well, on the uh, Nats Radio Network. Let's welcome Phil Wood from Masson. How are you, my friend? Very well, thanks. Very good. Let's start off. We're going to go to Orioles, Nationals, and Major League Baseball. And, of course, who else better to talk to than Phil Wood? O's 15-10, and 10, Red Sox right there at 15-11. and 11. Pretty good start for the Orioles considering they've uh, slumped a little bit, but that's only natural. I think uh, Buck will take 15-10 and 10 any day. Well, I think he will. I, I think uh, while he may not state uh, this publicly, but I, I can't imagine he's that thrilled with his starting rotation. Mm-hmm. A back end of the bullpen, terrific. Um, even the bridge to the bullpen has been good. But the starting rotation in Baltimore is, um, you know, obviously dis- disappointing with the uh, uh, the injury and, and the slow start by Gallardo and, and the, uh, well, let's be honest, the uh, r- remarkable inconsistency of Ubaldo Jimenez. Uh, Tillman was pretty good last time out. Um, look, this is, this is a club that is going to, club you to death with home runs. Uh, uh, I mean, a real offensive juggernaut. They're going to score a lot of runs this season. And they, they catch the ball extremely well, too. So you've got uh, two of the three that, that, that you want. I mean, everybody wants to win with starting pitching, but sometimes you, there's, you don't have the starting pitching to compete. But in this division right now, uh, you look at the Red Sox, you look at, at the, uh, the Orioles. I mean, I, I quite frankly don't think the Yankees are going to uh, be, even be – a 500 team this season. The Rays have pretty solid pitching overall, and, and Toronto, I think, uh, certainly is a club to be reckoned with, but uh, I think you have haves and have-nots, have and right now I think the Yankees look like they have-nots. Yeah, the Red Sox, uh, Toronto, Tampa Bay, right there on the heels, the Orioles. The Orioles have to, you know, still very, very early, but these types of games, Phil, in, in May and in, in the summer coming up can haunt teams in late September, especially with a wild card on the line. We've seen that in the past. Well, it's true, and, and obviously wins in April and May count just as much as wins in August and, and, and September. So uh, more important to win early, try to build up some, some type of a lead. But uh, it's interesting the number of people who weren't that thrilled with the Boston Red Sox um, before, just before the season started, and I think they've, they've come around a little bit. Uh, I think the, the Red Sox have, have uh, in, in essence, taken care of business. I mean, I think the, uh, I'm wondering now whether you'll ever see Sandoval play another game in Boston, although he still is owed a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Price has not been the world beater yet, but nonetheless, they've gotten the, the job done. But again, you know, 15 and 11 out of 26 games, you know, if you want to break the season up into, into segments, you, you've got either three 54-game segments or six 27-game segments, so you're coming up on the 27th game. Again, a lot can happen between now and even the 4th of July. And you mentioned the pitching for the Orioles, but having a bat like Machado at 350 and Trumbo's got eight home runs already, that has to definitely help ease the pain a little. Well, Trumbo, you knew, was going to hit some uh, home runs, and, and Trumbo, I think, while he's not a gold glover, he is at least adequate in the outfield. And, and I, growing up in the 50s and 60s and watching a lot of Major League Baseball then and seeing some guys in the outfield who uh, really were not that athletic, they could swing the bats, but uh, they, they would catch what they could get to, but they couldn't get to just about anything. And, and I think in Trumbo's case, he's fairly athletic. Now, he, he's got a pretty good throwing arm, but he's, uh, um, again, he, he's not going to get to everything. So, uh, but nonetheless, he's got a home run bat. He's been a lot more consistent at the plate, hasn't struck out as much as he has in years past. But again, it's quite early. Talking to Phil Wood, you see him on Masson, of course, uh, during Nationals coverage, talking a little bit about the American League here, then jump into the Nats as well. But you, you, ESPN is showcasing a lot of the Red Sox Yankees on Sunday night. And I got to wonder, by the time the Orioles play the Yankees on June 4th in Baltimore on Fox. I'm wondering if Fox will still want that game because of exactly what you said, Phil. The Yankees are just uh, going downward. I don't see them getting any better with this uh, division. Well, they're old. The Yankees are old. And I, I think back to, um, and I'm old enough to do this, to the 65 Yankees mm-hmm. when uh, they, they went to the World Series in 64 under Yogi Berra and uh, against the Cardinals. And the Cardinals beat them, and then Johnny Keane jumped from manager of the Cardinals to manager of the Yankees in 65. And I did a show back in the, uh, in the early 80s with Jim Bouton, who was with the Yankees then, and, and Bouton said, one afternoon we all got, got, got old. And he said it was just a matter of, of time before t- uh, age actually caught up with the Yankees. And, of course, by 66, the Yankees finished last out of, out of you know, 10 out of 10 teams in the, in the uh, 
American League prior to divisional play. This club is also old. This club has got uh, some holes. It's, uh, the, the starting pitching has been remarkably disappointing. Um, and, I mean, on the plus side, if you're a Yankee fan, you say, well, gee, after next year, we'll save $85 million because Teixeira's deal is up, Rodriguez's deal is up, and Sabathia's deal is up. Well, that's two years from now. So uh, I, I just I, I can't see this club being that competitive the rest of the season. And I, while I don't think that there's uh, um, you know, any uh, danger necessarily of Joe Girardi losing his job, I think Brian Cashman could be under some scrutiny because he's the guy who put this roster together. Yeah, the younger Steinbrenners have been pretty consistent, but you have to wonder, like you said, about the future of the man- manager and the general manager as well, talking to Phil Wood right there from Mass. And this kind of reminds me, in my generation at least, Phil, of the post Reggetti, Tommy John, Guidry, Winfield era when the Yankees struggled as well. Yeah, you look back, I guess, in the, the early 90s, yep. um, prior to Joe Torre. Uh, when yeah they they had some issues when well, obviously when when the, when Buck Showalter managed sure. the Yankees uh, when Stump Merrill managed the Yankees but of course that's the other thing if 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 uh, if the boss if George Steinbrenner were were still alive he would have changed managers a couple of times by by, by this time I mean mm-hmm. uh, once uh, Girardi finished out of the playoffs they would have changed you know they would have brought somebody else in absolutely all right let's switch gears to the Nationals. Off to a great start, eighteen and eight. We talked off the air well about their schedule, but they're they're doing it and doing it very well, no matter who's on their schedule, of course. And uh, the Mets right there behind them, sixteen and nine. But that great early start by Dusty Baker has kind of quieted the skeptics about the Nationals. But again, it'll be about sustaining for both the Nationals and the Orioles. Well, it's true in, in Washington, um, and and I'm. I'm at every home game of the Nationals, and, and I, I see these guys all the time. And the difference in terms of demeanor, um, uh, decorum in the clubhouse, under Matt Williams it was very, very stiff because he was very stiff, and he always seemed to be extremely uptight. Well, Dusty's a 180 from that. He's, he's a very relaxed guy. He knows everybody's name. He knows their girlfriends, their wives' names, their kids' names, their grandparents' names, their favorite food. He is, he is so locked in to every player on that team and you see it in the dugout where Matt Williams would, was pretty much uh, a standalone guy Dusty is working the bench, he's talking to all of his coaches, he goes from one end to the other and, and there's a lot of hugs that take place, I mean, uh, I think these guys really like, like playing for him, I think they bought into what he was selling very early in spring training, but you know the key so far for the Nationals has been great starting pitching, I mean their starting pitching has been just remarkable and you know, you, the, the numbers bear that out um, and I think that offensively, they really haven't gotten started yet. Defensively, they're much better than they were a year ago. Fewest number of errors in Major League Baseball. Um, I, I do think that, I think you saw it last, last night, there's got to be some question about the back end of the bullpen. I think getting to Papelbon is one thing, but I think if, you watch, if you've watched him this season, his stuff has become very, very ordinary. And, and I, I, I mean, he's obviously got a contract for this season for a, a lot of money, but I, it would not shock me if, if this continues, if his inconsistency in closing out games continues, if they don't start the transition to Felipe Rivero a little sooner than next season. Great point. Talking to Phil Wood from Masson. This is Greg Picaveras along with Ken Johnson. Sports Scene, News Talk 1650, also live anywhere on your phone or your computer. Tune in.com. Type in WHKT. But you mentioned the offense. Bryce Harper, nine home runs, and Daniel Murphy acquired by the Mets, batting what, 376? Yeah, he's, he's off to a great start with the stick. And, of course, Bryce is in kind of a slump right now mm-hmm. after this incredible April where he was player of the month in the National League. Um, he is he's kind of fallen in a hole. I mean, he's, he's got one hit, I think, in his last 20 some at bats and he's struck out a lot. He's swung a lot of bad pitches, and obviously no one wants to throw him a fastball, and, and so he's seen a steady diet of breaking balls away, 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 and he ends up, and, and a lot of those pitches which he would have, have, have just looked at and, and taken for balls, he's now swinging the bat because he's so anxious to get, you know, get his, his act back in gear. But uh, as a result, he's developed some bad habits at the plate. I know he's pulled off some balls, and, and it's just it's a matter of, of, uh, of him, I guess, you know, getting his act straightened out with Rick Shu and with Dusty Baker. But, uh, I mean, tremendous talent, obviously. But uh, at this stage of the game, I, I'm sure he must be wondering when that next 
home run when that next extra base hit is coming. One thing I want to ask you, Phil, because you've been around the Nationals so long, they've only made the postseason twice, in 12 and 14. Mm-hmm. And the, the thing that baffles me the most is the constant changing of the managers in such a young organization. Robinson, Acta, Riggleman, Davey, uh, Williams. You know, Now Dusty, of course, the former great Dodger, is the manager. And, of course, he, he's even been around you know, with the Giants, the Reds, the Cubs, now the Nats. So why is mm-hmm. that? Why has that been? Well, I think, in, of course, in the beginning, uh, Frank Robinson came with the franchise, and he already had an identity of sorts in the Mid-Atlantic region, so it made sense that, that he would stay as the manager. And, of course, the first season of the Nationals, the, the club was still owned by Major League Baseball. The club wasn't awarded to the, to the Lerner family until halfway through the 06 season. Well, at that point in time, I think they decided, because they were moving to a new ballpark in 08, they wanted a younger guy. They wanted their own guy in there, and they hired Manny Acta. Well, Manny got the job at the worst possible time because they had no players. The farm system was bereft of talent at that point for the most part. They had drafted pretty well their first couple of years, but uh, again, other than Ryan Zimmerman, the other guys weren't ready for the major leagues yet. So Manny gets the job when, when they're probably at their lowest ebb in terms of personnel, and when he uh, got off to a 26-61 and 61 start a couple of years later, they made Jim Riggleman the manager. He'd been on the coaching staff, and of course, Riggleman is a, a D.C. guy. He grew up in Rockville, Maryland, um, and uh, went to Frostburg State uh, University in in Maryland. Um, but again, he got basically a horrible contract offer when they offered him a, uh, the deal for the following season. But he was so anxious to manage in his hometown that he took it, and uh, but was promised uh, certain things that uh, they would negotiate a, a new contract uh, at a certain date, and then. They basically didn't do that, and that's why he quit when he, when he did, because he felt he'd been lied to. And uh, Davy Johnson was already working in the organization, but he took it on a, basically a short-term basis because he was a much older guy. Matt Williams was, you know, Mike Rizzo's hand-picked choice. He had worked with uh, with Matt with the Arizona Diamondbacks, and I thought that Matt was ready to manage a big league club. But from a personality standpoint, that just didn't work out. And after. Uh, not making the playoffs last year, uh, they they made the change to Dusty, and of course there was that whole business with Bud Black being involved. But I think clearly they they made the right choice because I don't think Bud's style would have meshed with this particular roster. But I think it it really comes down to when they won in 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 twelve they with uh, with Davy they knew that Davy was there short term anyway because he was seventy years old. And uh, when they won with Williams in in twenty fourteen, of course he had the personnel, and they. The players wanted to show that 2013 had been somewhat of a fluke. So, um, but and again, when you look at the 2014 uh, playoffs, the NLDS game two, where Jordan Zimmerman coming off a no hitter in his last start of the regular season is absolutely dealing again. He's pitching absolutely just the same game he was he threw against the Marlins for the no hitter, and he a guy gets on base, and instead of leaving him in there to get to get out of it. Um, he 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 yanked him. His his pitch count was low enough. He could have he could have stayed in the game, and I've heard some people inside the game say that was the worst pitching change in baseball history, mm-hmm. because uh, at that point in time uh, it would have been uh, a one one tie going back to San Francisco. As it was, it was the Giants were up two zip at that point, and the series was essentially over. But. Uh, I just think that that Williams was uh, in the wrong place at the wrong time, and I think that he was given, uh, you know, the responsibility of a contending team, and 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 wasn't really up to the challenge. But I think Dusty, because he's one of the winningest managers in history, he's never won a World Series. Got to got to one uh, when he was managed the Giants against the Angels. But uh, I think this is again, this is going to be a short term thing as well, uh, Greg, because. Dusty made it clear that this is this this is my last stop. I want to manage a couple more years to see if I can get to get back to another World Series and win it. Then I will ride off into the sunset among my myriad of other businesses. Right, he's no spring chicken. He played with Steve Sachs with the Dodgers way back in the day. Way well, back. Hey, listen, this guy came up um, to the major leagues when he was still in his teens in the late sixties with the Atlanta Braves. Yeah, uh, he he was uh, in the lineup with. Uh, with Henry Aaron and 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 Cleet Boyer and some mm-hmm. other guys who were longtime veterans, but um, you know Dusty is is a guy who who thinks young. I've had a lot of great conversations with Dusty about rock and roll. Mm-hmm. Um, he attended the Monterey Pop Festival, and uh, I mean he had he was into all the music, not just the R and B and stuff, but he was into the psychedelic music and and. Uh, 
uh, was a big fan of the Doors, mm-hmm. and uh, cool. I mean, it just—it's—he's an interesting—he's—he's he's truly a Renaissance man because his interests are so varied. He owns a winery, for instance. Uh, he owns a solar energy business. I mean, he's—he's—he's he's, he's really got his fingers in a lot of different pies, but he's. Uh, he is a remarkably smart guy. I want to ask you, and of course, Dusty, very eclectic, sometimes a little bit of a loose cannon, but it's always interesting during the uh, the press conferences. He seems a little bit more grounded during the um, the radio and the TV interviews. Zimmerman's from this area, as you well know, right here from mm-hmm. Virginia Beach. What is his status? He's always been consistent, but always been injured. And what is Strasburg's status as well? Well, of course, um, Ryan um, still has several years to go on, on his contract, and he has had some injuries. But one of the things that Baker said when he, when he got to uh, Washington was that he was going to give guys scheduled days off that uh, he learned when he came up with, with the Braves um, from dealing with Henry Aaron, that, that Aaron said, look, I know exactly what days I'm going to be off. He says it doesn't pay to, to play every single game. Uh, you've got to give your body a rest, give your mind a rest. And, and so um, Ryan has had days off, uh, scheduled days off, where Clint Robinson plays first base. And, and he's not bothered right now by the plantar fasciitis in his foot. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, they seem to think they can keep him healthy, to, healthy enough to play, you know, 140 plus, plus games. As far as Strasburg goes, Strasburg is off to a, a tremendous start, obviously, just picking up where he left off, off late last season. But he's going to be a free agent in, in, the, yeah. uh, in the fall once the season's over with. And, uh, I mean, let's be honest here, Greg, in, uh, in the open market, this guy's going to be offered the, the moon. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that uh, the, pres- the presumption is that, well, he's, he's from San Diego, he's probably going to want to go back to the West Coast. And that may well be so, but. If you talk to him, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't rule any, anything out. And, and I know from dealing with players over the years, certain assumptions have been made. For instance, 30 years ago when Baltimore signed Fred Lynn as a free agent, uh, after he left the Angels, the presumption was he was going to stay on the West Coast. He goes, comes to the complete opposite coast, and talking to him, he said, I don't know why people thought that. He said, I didn't, I didn't grow up in California. I grew up in Chicago. Hey, Phil, uh, what, hold on one second. We're going to yeah. take a real quick news break. I'm going to get you back on. Just hold on one okay, second. Okay, sure. All right. Phil Wood will join us in just a few moments and continue right here on Sports Scene. Cloudy skies, scattered showers today, a high of 72. It's 1230 on AM 1650. Ohio Governor John Kasich is leaving the Republican presidential contest, giving Donald Trump a clear path to the party's nomination. Kasich will announce the end of his underdog White House bid later today. That's according to several Kasich campaign officials. This follows Donald Trump's win in the Indiana primary. Earlier, Ted Cruz suspended his GOP campaign for the White House. A senior U.S. military officer says a Navy SEAL who was killed during a firefight in Iraq yesterday was part of a quick reaction force that moved in to help American military advisors who came under ISIS attack. So far, another down day on Wall Street. The Dow is off about 91 points, the NASDAQ down 33, and the S&P is trading 12 points lower. More details at srnnews.com. I'm Nick Soboleski, a select quote agent with a true story that could save you hundreds of dollars a year. A woman named Linda just called. Her husband, Ray, has a $300,000 group life insurance policy, but is changing jobs and can't take it with him. Well, I impartially shopped the highly rated term life insurance companies we represent and found Ray, who is 41 and takes medication to control his cholesterol, a 10-year, $500,000 policy for under $26 a month. That's almost twice the coverage for less than half of what he had paid. If SelectQuote hasn't shopped for your life insurance, you're probably paying too much. For your free quote, call 1-800-423-4557. That's 1-800-423-4557. 1-800-423-4557. Or go to SelectQuote.com. We shop. You save. Get full details on the example policy at slowcode.com slash commercials. Your price can vary depending on your health, issuing company, and other factors not available in all states. I'm Lou Dobbs. Our trade deficit is narrowing. People in Chesapeake and Hampton Roads have come to expect the finest Italian food at Spaghetti Eddie's. 
In addition to great lunch and dinner served daily, this fine establishment caters to and can host your party. Call 484-7301 for their Taylor Road location and call 410-5500 for their restaurant in Greenbrier. For more, log on to Spaghetti Eddie's Pizza Cafe.com. All right, and welcome back to Sports Scene Live right here on News Talk 1650. Greg Picadaris, glad you're with us with Ken Johnson talking to our very special guest, Phil Wood from Masson, held on during the news break, talking Orioles, Nationals, Major League Baseball. You're talking about Fred Lynn and some of the players back then comparing to some now. And, of course, when Strasburg first got to the Nationals, it seemed like there was a ton of hype, ton, tons and tons of hype. He doesn't seem like he's into that hype at all, though. He never really has been. It was no. funny. Um, when he first signed, and he immediately went to uh, Florida to the, the site of Nat Spring, spring Training to, to work out, and uh, when he got to the hotel in uh, um, Melbourne, Florida, there were a couple of dozen people waiting outside the hotel with stuff for him to sign. And he looked at them, and then he looked at the, the, the young man from the Nationals who had accompanied him on the, on the trip and said, what do these people want? I haven't done anything yet. Yeah. And, uh, and, and he, and, but he, he, he stood there and, and, and signed their stuff. But it's, uh, now, it, here's the thing about Strasburg that is, to me, is the most notice, uh, noticeable this year. Years past, when you would see him interviewed in the clubhouse after a game, he'd never look at the questioner. He'd always look down at the floor. Now he looks people in the eye, he smiles, he laughs. It's, he's a different guy. I think his, he's reached a, a point now in his career where he's completely relaxed in, in, in what he does. He's secure in his own ability. And uh, I, I just think he's, he's become, um, you know, he's, he's joined the, 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 the club, essentially, sure. of, of, of veterans. And I think that, as I said, he may end up someplace else. But look at the fact that, uh, young Joe Ross has pitched as well as he's he's pitched, right. and is probably much better than a fourth or fifth starter overall. And at Harrisburg right now in the Eastern League is Lucas Giolito, who is a former first round pick, who's already been through Tommy John surgery. Um, great big guy, about six six, and throws hard. And uh, he's considered by many the heir apparent to Strasburg on the Washington staff. So with Giolito coming along and Ross pitching as well as he already is in the major leagues, I think they're in pretty good shape going forward. Yeah, Strasburg has definitely evolved, got more mature, more confident. Of course, that comes with time. And, of course, I want to ask you, you mentioned he looked down on the floor. I mean, you dealt with Dave Kingman a lot. He was no fan of social anything. How was right. that? How was that experience? Well, when you um, remember Kingman. this is a guy who had just complete contempt for the media. Right. He's the guy who, who you know, uh, famously sent a dead rat to a female reporter. Absolutely. Um, but here's the funny thing about Kingman. In retirement, he's the sweetest guy in the world. Yeah. In retirement, it's like, oh, that was just an act when I was playing. This is who I am, really. But, I mean, here's a guy... Kingman is one of the more interesting stories to me, uh, Greg, because mm -hmm. he finished so close to 500 home runs. Yeah. And his last season, his final season as an active player, he had 35 home runs. Yeah. And the following year, nobody would sign him. He ended up playing a little bit of minor league baseball, but then he just he walked away. And to me, it was clear the reason that nobody signed him was because of the fear that this guy could hit 500 home runs and we'll be forced to put him in the Hall of Fame. Right. With a you know with a 228 batting average. Yeah, him and Steve Carlton and George Foster, although they all played different positions in that era, were all very you know anti media, very reclusive, and sometimes you know that PR, even Barry Bonds, you know, um, very private, uh, would not let you in when he played for the. Pirates and the Giants now, as a, you know, part of the the Marlins staff, he's pretty all inclusive. Well, I, I think at this point in time, he, he doesn't have much much choice. Sure, I mean, he wants to be popular. Uh, he, certainly, he would he would like to uh, get a plaque in, in Cooperstown, um, and he knows that the people who have the votes are members of the Baseball Writers Association of America. So, um, it's it's you you spend years alienating the the people who have that power over your your future and 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 now you're trying to to make up for it by uh, uh doing it about face in terms of 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 personality. Carlton of course put up 
huge numbers as a left-handed pitcher. I guess the unfortunate thing was that he never was willing to accept the fact that his skills were gone at the end of his career, and he bounced around a lot. But uh, he became kind of a recluse, actually. I mean, sure. He, he lives in a like a compound built into the side of a mountain out of rubber tires in Colorado, in Durango, Colorado. So... He's uh, he's a little antisocial now. Yeah, he's not exactly on Twitter and Facebook blowing yeah. up right now. And uh, going around, you know, the, you mentioned uh, we also want to mention the All Star breaks, even though they're a few years away. The Nationals are hosting in eighteen next year. The Marlins and this year you talk about Strasburg on the West Coast. Yeah, well, again, it's it's uh, the whole issue of of alternating it between the American League and the National League. That's kind of gone by the board. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess that in the sense that they they want to take care of the of the towns that have built the newer ballparks. Um, you know, that certainly makes, makes some, some sense. Uh, there is, uh, interesting, Greg, some, uh, uh, there's kind of this uh, grassroots movement to try to get Vin Scully uh, in the broadcast booth for the All-Star game this season. So that makes perfect sense to me since after 67 years, he's finally got to hang up the microphone with the Dodgers. Absolutely. And, of course, uh, you talk, what's more surprising to do before we let you go, the Cubs at 19-6 and six or the White Sox at 19-8? and eight? Well, the White Sox to me are a huge surprise. I didn't think the White Sox would be that uh, that competitive this season, and uh, I really thought um, Robin Ventura was would was one of the more uh, likely to be fired managers by the All Star break. But obviously, things have gone gone well for them. They made some interesting moves in the off season. Um, they dumped a guy named John Danks yesterday, who still owed a lot of money this season, but had been with the White Sox for ten seasons. But I mean, it's interesting the whole Adam LaRoche thing in spring training. People thought was going to blow up in their face. Well, that's pretty much a, a forgotten issue now. Mm-hmm. Well, I look forward to seeing you um, Memorial Weekend. The um, Nats host, I believe, the Cardinals that weekend that's on right. Fox, and we'll know a lot more about the Cardinals who are struggling this year, and a lot more about the Nationals by then as well, Phil. Absolutely. Thank you, my friend. All the best to you, and I'll see you in a few weeks. Thanks, Greg. See you. Always a pleasure. Phil Wood right there from Masson, Ken Johnson, really one of the elite guests, and, of course, a great uh, job on Masson during the Nationals coverage, and, of course, also very good on the radio, too. We get the elite guests right here on Sports Scene. Uh, talking to Phil Wood. Also, want to introduce uh, Outback's lunch every blooming day, exclusively at twelve fifty-five Fordham Drive in Virginia Beach, right in Ken's favorite part of Virginia Beach, Kempsville. With your favorites like Aussie tacos made with chicken, fish, or steak, try their new ribeye melt top with bacon. Also, their macaroni and cheese at Outback is un. Believable cheddar and garlic aioli on a toasted artisan bun. They got great fish tacos with over lunch uh, combinations as far as a done tons and tons seventy lunch combinations starting at only six ninety nine. It's now lunch at last at Outback twelve fifty five Fordham Drive. Go by and see Mike and the great staff right there in Kempsville. Convenient to everybody in Hampton Roads. Great lunch, dinner, appetizers, and desserts at Outback at twelve fifty five Fordham Drive in Virginia Beach, and of course. The Norfolk Tides, of course, uh, for more information on their great season, go to NorfolkTides.com. They are the defending 2015 International League South Division champion Norfolk Tides, who are part of the Baltimore Orioles. They play at beautiful Harbor Park. Bring your friends and family to root on the Orioles of tomorrow today. Go to NorfolkTides.com for their schedule, tickets, and information. This is Sports Scene. We'll take a short break live right here on 1650. Tune in.com. After these messages. The place the locals and tourists go for U.S. rare coins and currency is Newcastle Coins and Collectibles in Chesapeake. They specialize in U.S. silver and gold coins, provide free verbal offers, and are always buying U.S. rare coins. Visit them at 681 North Battlefield Boulevard in Chesapeake, across from Chesapeake General, Tuesday through Saturday, and online at NewcastleCollectibles.com. Call 609-3633. That's 609-3633. Or Newcastle Coins and Collectibles. Good Italian food, daily specials, and a place people enjoy is Spaghetti Eddie's. Indulge in your mouth-watering pizza, pasta, subs, salads, appetizers, and desserts. Open seven days a week, log on to SpaghettiEddie'sPizzaCafe.com and visit them at Taylor Road and on Eden Way North in Chesapeake for lunch and dinner. Like them on Facebook. Italian food you can count on is at Spaghetti Eddie's. 
over 55 years, Long's Billiards is the place to go for all your billiard supplies. Long's Billiards has Brunswick and Old House and Pool tables at more than 50% off. Long's Billiards has never offered prices this low before. Seven, eight, and nine foot pool tables on sale now. Hurry, this deal won't last. Visit Long's Billiards at Newport News or log on to longsbilliards.com. Call now, 599-3661. That's 599-3661. Listen to the USCAA Softball Selection Show on News Talk 1650 WHKT and on TuneIn.com on May 5th from noon to 1 p.m. Learn about the playing field for America's small colleges as we discuss the USCAA softball postseason. Follow the USCAA on Twitter and save the date for the USCAA Softball Selection Show on Thursday, May 5th from 12 noon to 1 p.m. on 1650 AM and on TuneIn.com. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick. Email the show, bcogb at hotmail.com. Now back to Greg bick in the Hampton Roads Online Mall.com studios. It's now time for Greg's Highlights, presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. And I want to thank Phil Wood. What a great guest right there from Masson. Phil Wood talking Orioles, Nationals, and Major League Baseball. Also, as Ken has got on his promo, we got another show tomorrow from 12 to 1, live right here, the USCAA softball show. We did the baseball show last week. It really blew up on Twitter. Great uh, information right there from the USCAA. Look forward to that show live right here tomorrow in 1650 from 12 to 1. NBA update, uh, Golden State 2 over Portland, Miami 1 over uh, Toronto, Cleveland leads the series 1-0 over Atlanta. And, of course, uh, San Antonio and OKC won all. Very controversial series so far as well. So we heard from Phil Wood. We want to welcome Lance Reese. Had him on when I was at the game. A big uh, supporter of Sweet Pea Whitaker, one of probably the premier athlete ever in Hampton Roads. A big backer of Sweet Pea. Of course, I would say Bruce Smith won two as far as the top two athletes ever from this area. Let's welcome Lance Reese. He owns IHOP in Suffolk as well. How are you, buddy? Hey, how you doing, Greg? Very good, good my friend. You, man. you too, you too. You got a big event. You're always giving back to the community. What's coming up with Lance Reese? Uh, well, we got a event going on at the American Legion uh, Post 280 on Battlefield Boulevard underneath the water tower. I think everyone's familiar with it. Um, we have a, a nice boxing event going on out there, boxing and uh, uh, mixed martial arts and uh it's a fundraiser for the American Legion. Um, just having a little, giving back to the community, having a little fun and uh, food and drinks and stuff out there. You know, it's going to be a great, great night of entertainment. Well, let's give us all the information that people can go to at this event. Give us the date and the location and any other information as far as tickets. Okay, well, uh, the location is on uh, 459 North Battlefield Boulevard underneath the uh, water tower on Battlefield in Kempsville. Um, it's going to be an outdoor event. Um, we're going to have the boxing ring outside and uh, have uh, some mixed martial arts. Uh, you can come and get tickets. You can come inside the American Legion and buy tickets, or you can buy tickets when you get there. It's twenty dollars a ticket. And it's all all the proceeds are going to the American Legion, and uh, what the American Legion is one of the oldest uh, veteran services founded in uh, nineteen nineteen, and we do a lot for the community and help out and uh, try to give back to the vets that are uh, out here, and uh, that's what it's all about. Yeah, the American Legion's also done a great job over several decades with baseball for the high school kids as well. They really do. Absolutely. You want to elaborate on that? uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they have the baseball team, and also they have a a shooting, youth shooting team that's, uh, you know, prelude to the Junior Olympics. Uh, they, you know, do a lot of law enforcement uh, nights and things like that. It's just a lot of a nice place to go, and we're always looking for members. Uh, you can uh, people don't realize you can become a sale member, a son of the American Legion. That's if anyone in your family was in the military and mm-hmm. you wanted to come out. But uh, it's just a great night to have some family entertainment. You know, have, it's a nice, nice evening of fun. And, that's that's what it's all about. I know uh, you'll probably be out there. I'm going to be out there. And, mm-hmm. uh, I hope everyone comes out. Yeah, talking to Lance Reese right there. He really is very involved with Chesapeake. Any, uh, Lance, were you surprised at anything about the elections uh, yesterday? I know you follow politics a little bit. 
Uh, yeah, not, nothing really surprising to me. <laughs> Just <laughs> you know, same old I really stuff. I don't follow it that much. I've been busy opening up a, a restaurant on uh, Pleasure House Road, a tap house, so I've been really busy. So I haven't really been watching much news of anything. Right, and of course, uh, we're talking to Lance Reese. Now, folks, you might not know this, but Lance is a really good friend of Sweet Pea Whitaker. In fact, I interviewed Sweet Pea on my TV program several years ago, had him on the radio. We blew up, had 19 phone calls, as you well remember, um, Lance. We set a record for talk radio in this market with 19 calls in three hours. And of course, Sweet, yeah. Pea, Sweet Pea was a part of that. Bruce Smith called in. Everybody called in. Nothing has come close when we worked at the game. Let's give us an update. What is Sweet Pea doing? How is his health? And what is he up to? Uh, actually, he's right. He's over here uh, with us. Uh, we're, like I said, me and my brother John are opening up a tap house in uh, Virginia Beach. He's just hanging out watching the construction, but he's uh, you know doing his usual thing. Very yeah. good, very good. I never forget when he boxed. Uh, saw him so many times, and you know, I uh, had a chance when I worked for HBO one time to sit there with him. And of course, uh, just as it really was an event. So, all the best. And once again, uh, plug your event before we let you go. Yeah, uh, uh, the event is uh, going to be at four fifty nine North Battlefield Boulevard in Great Bridge, right underneath the water tower. I like to say that because it's easy to find. Um, and it's going to be an outdoor event. It's going to be a really good night of fun entertainment. You know, it's a fundraiser for the American Legion, so it's a great night to come out and help support it. Yep, very good. See everyone come on out and see us. All right, well, good luck with the restaurant. Say hello to Sweet Pea, and we will talk to you soon, Mr. Lance. All right, thank you, Greg, and you take care. My pleasure. Lance Reese right there, really giving back to the community, Ken, and as you well know, the American Legion always does that very well. Oh, yeah, and for a great cause. Absolutely, too. And, of course, uh, the Premier Buffet in Hampton Roads is open. Tokyo Grill and Buffet, indulge in this all-you-can-eat extravaganza, which includes Chinese, Japanese, hibachi, sushi, and American food, as well as fruit and dessert, too. Their uh, lunch is only six thirty nine. Can't beat that price. Dinner nine thirty nine. Sunday all day nine ninety nine. Where are they located? At, you ask. They're right there at forty nine West Mercury Boulevard in Hampton, and they have takeout as well. New ownership and new management too, of course. And CP Shuckers has got their big event uh, next weekend. Mother Shuckers, of course. Uh, for more, go to uh, Hampton Roads Online Mall dot com. Go to the restaurant section. You can see their website. They are a locals tradition with locations on Shore Drive and Pacific. Avenue. People love their prime rib seafood and much more. they got great appetizers, burgers, pasta, seafood. Chef Leon is unbelievable at Shore Drive. They showcase NASCAR. That's really heating up. Great race that Richmond Fox did a few weeks ago. Major League Baseball, NHL, NBA, college sports, golf, soccer, tennis. Like both locations on Facebook and log on to cpshuckers.com. Go by and see Matt and Mark and the great staff. Eat or be eaten at CP Shuckers. Always giving back to the community with great events like their golf tournament and their annual Mother Shuckers as well at CP Shuckers. All right, stay tuned. Now all the fun stuff. Ken and I are going to get to what teased me off. Ken's been getting teed off about everything right here on 1650. You don't want to miss that, folks. Lock it in. Go to gjbtv.com. Hit the YouTube link for archive shows. Tell your friends to listen on tunein.com by typing WHKT each Wednesday from 12 to 1. Stay tuned. Listen to the USCAA Softball Selection Show on News Talk 1650 WHKT and on TuneIn.com on May 5th from noon to 1 p.m. Learn about the playing field for America's small colleges as we discuss the USCAA softball postseason. Follow the USCAA on Twitter and save the date for the USCAA Softball Selection Show on Thursday, May 5th from 12 noon to 1 p.m. on 1650 AM and on TuneIn.com. Mi Hogar is your restaurant for the finest Mexican cuisine in Hampton Roads. At Mi Hogar, everything is prepared fresh in a casual atmosphere. Enjoy traditional favorites such as quesadillas, tacos, burritos, and fajitas, as well as refreshing beverages. Mi Hogar has two locations, 4201 Granby Street in Norfolk and 801 North Battlefield Boulevard in Chesapeake. Call ahead at 640-7705. At Mi Hogar, there is something for everyone. 
the place to go for U.S. rare coins is Newcastle Coins and Collectibles in Chesapeake. They specialize in U.S. and silver and gold coins and provide free verbal offers and are always buying U.S. rare coins. Newcastle Coins and Collectibles, 681 North Battlefield Boulevard in Chesapeake, across from Chesapeake General, open Tuesday through Saturday and always online at newcastlecollectibles.com. Call 757-609-3633, 757-609-3633 for Newcastle Coins and Collectibles. When it comes to automobile service in Hampton Roads, Fink's Car Care is the place locals have counted on for decades. Family owned and operated, they specialize in oil changes, state inspection, radiator service, tires alignments, and showcase win automotive products. Military and senior discounts are available. Like them on Facebook and visit them on South Military Highway in Chesapeake and Victory Boulevard in Portsmouth, Monday through Saturday. For more, log on to Fink'sCarCare.com and call 545-3573. Now back to Greg Bicavaris and Sports Scene in the Hampton Roads Online Mall.com studio. All right, thank you very much, Ken Johnson. Glad you're with us. Greg Bicavaris, this is Sports Scene every Wednesday, 12 to 1, right here on the radio, 1650. Also, tunein.com. Type in WHKT Archive by going to GJBTV.com. Hit the YouTube link, all powered by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. Browse, shop, visit, of course. Uh, you remember Daryl Cummings used to host a show here, Kenny, from 1 to 2 on Wednesdays. He's got Cape Henry Racket Club Kids Camp coming up June 20th through the 24th. He's going to have tennis, cornhole, wiffle ball, water activities, frisbee. He's going to have various backyard games, a lot of fun at Cape Henry Racket Club. Go to chrc1974.com. Perfect for the kids, of course. Uh, and, of course, you'll see the calendar and the events and all that right there. Or give them a call at 681-2519. That's chrc1974.com for Cape Henry Racket Club Kids Camp coming up. June 20th through 24th, Saffron Mediterranean Cuisine is hiring. They have the home of the delicious shish kebabs. Great place to take mom on Mother's Day and on early Happy Mother's Day to all the moms at 10417 Warwick Boulevard. Go by and see David and the staff at their phone number is 223-9978. Delicious shish kebabs, folks. They can pretty much make anything you want. Hot and cold appetizers, entrees. They've got fish. They've got a kid's menu. They've got desserts. They've got wraps, stews, open daily for lunch and dinner, seven days a week, showcasing dine-in, carry-out catering. Like them on Facebook and Twitter as well. You can follow them on Twitter. That is Saffron Mediterranean Cuisine right there in Hilton Village in Newport News. Perfect, perfect place for Mother's Day every day for lunch and dinner. Kenny, let's get to What Tees Me Off. What Tees You Off, presented by GJBTV.com. Ken, when you are in person and you're trying to chat with another person who's on the phone at the same time. <laughs> Oddly enough, that happens all the time. Now, which one's more important, the person you're standing next to or the person on the phone? Right. And, of course, uh, we always have fun with what tees me off. It doesn't always happen to me necessarily, but some of my friends in general. Ken, let's say you're ordering turkey and mashed potatoes, but it's covered with four or five pieces of bread. What's more important, the turkey and the stuffing or the bread? Well, obviously, they try to pad it with the bread. So it's like when you order a drink anywhere, a soft drink or any kind of drink that normally has ice in it. If you'll notice, it's a glacier in there, and there's about two ounces of actual drink in there. Order it without the ice. It's usually chilled anyway. The lines go through a, a little section that kind of cools off the liquid. It kind of has to do that. Uh, and it's usually cool enough. I mean, your body's 98.7. Do you really want to put something in there that's 31 degrees? No. So just get, get don't get ice. Get it without the ice, unless you like to chew on the ice, and what's wrong with you for doing that? And you'll be just fine, and you'll actually maybe get a little closer to your value of the drink. Right. Certain coffee shops load with ice because you can't get refills, so you're basically just paying five bucks for ice. You're not kidding. Well, why would you pay five bucks for coffee anyway, kids? Exactly. Come on. That, that fad is over with. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Now the, the vape shops are all, all, the, all the norm now. All right. When you call a number, Kenny, and the operator recording says, we can connect you with a similar business. No, I don't want to connect with a similar business. I can Google another business if I want to. Yeah, or when you call somebody and you get that message, please hold and enjoy this piece of music while we find your blankety-blank <laughs> customer. Da -da 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 -da. 
A, I don't need to listen to music. I don't have the time. Just let it ring through. And B, if your service is so slow that you've got to play music while they try to find you, right? get another service. All right, Ken, all, you grew up here like I did, and I grew up going to 36th in Atlantic and Virginia Beach. The debacle of the Cavalier Hotel drama, we don't want to hear about it anymore. Just fix the thing. Fix it or tear it down. Let it go, but don't run the thing in the mud, Kenny. We were it was predicted that this exact same thing yep. would happen. And it that has. it would run over time, it would run over money. People predicted that would happen. Everybody said it's gonna cost a lot more money, being unrealistic. Plus, now that they're gonna take that whole lawn that which was a lovely lawn in front of it and use that for these squashed together houses where you can't swing a cat in between the two of them. Now they wanna take out part of Atlantic Avenue to put in a new lawn. It, that whole deal was just stank from high heaven. Plus, if you look at who was involved and who benefited from it, I think there's still an investigation of that going on. Yeah, and now we're, it's happening again in Aragona Village, which hopefully we'll talk about in the near future because we're running out of time. Right. Of course, this is what teased me off right here, part of Sports Scene every Wednesday, 12 to 1, at Greg Bick on Twitter, gjbtv.com. Kenny, SK Ballard drama of the ODU complex. Look, let's hype up the Old Dominion football complex when it's a reality instead of a, a contractor trying to get publicity. That didn't work. Ken, cruise ships. Whether it's a faulty vessel or, or virus on board, there's too many issues being stuck in a dorm room size bedroom, and you're only allowed to get on the uh, land for about eight hours anyway. I, with apologies to my friends in there, I have quite a few friends that love to go cruising. Huh. A cruise ship is a big hotel with a bow and a stern stuck on there, and it goes from one place to the other. Unlike a hotel, which you can get out of your room, go down to the lobby, walk outside, go to different places, you're stuck on the ship. Unless you like swimming, and there's a lot of stuff to do on the ship, but eating and then sleeping and then sleeping yeah. and eating. Give me a hotel where I can get out and walk around and exactly. go places. And you're going to an island? Well, what's an island? You're, it's you're, water with sand. You can find that here. Yeah. That's a lot of money to sit in a hotel that's going somewhere and you can't get out of. I'll do these quick laundromats that never seem to have enough change. Well, guess what, folks? Comforters are big. We don't always have change with <laughs> us. Remote odd towns in Virginia, Ken, that nobody's ever heard of, like Hillsville, Clarksburg, Norton, Scott County, Russell County. Page County, Patrick County, really? Look up Cuckoo. Wow, too many of these remote <laughs> towns. Cars that sound like tanks down the road, Kenny. I mean, nobody wants to hear your engine if you got a little Pinto. Yeah, and buying aftermarket stuff to make it even louder. How rude. People that you hear from, Ken, only when they need something. Yeah, yeah. As, it's worse if it's relative. <laughs> all right. And Mr. Kasich, uh, Mr. Cruz bowed out yesterday. Have you done the math lately? And I do agree with Trump. Your eating habits are horrible. Um, Kenny, last thing, satellite football camps. Um, to each his own. We don't need a piggyback on somebody else's camp. If you're not good enough to host your own camp, we don't want to see anybody else come down here either. Host your own football camp. Old Dominion. All right, I want to thank um, Phil Wood from Mass and also Lance Reese. Great show. Sports scene every Wednesday, 12 to 1. For more, go to gjbtv.com. Hit the YouTube link. Interact at Greg Bick on Twitter. For Ken Johnson, I'm Greg bick -Averis. Happy Wednesday. We'll talk to you soon. AM 1650, WHKT Portsmouth, it's 1 o'clock. Tom, I'm Rich Thomason. Republican John Kasich is reportedly about to suspend his presidential campaign. According to campaign officials speaking anonymously, Kasich will announce he's ending his presidential bid today. The second-term governor struggled to connect with Republican primary voters and was able to only win his home state of Ohio. His decision to bow out comes one day after Ted Cruz ended his campaign, giving Donald Trump a clear path to the party's nomination. White House correspondent Greg Clugston. Democrat Bernie Sanders scored his 18th victory with his win over Hillary Clinton in Indiana. Sanders encouraged by this Hoosier victory. It will give us some more delegates. It will give us momentum going into West Virginia. It will give us momentum going into Kentucky and to Oregon. Uh, and it will give us momentum going into the largest state in this country, California. Clinton, though, is still way ahead. In delegates, include the superdelegates in the count. And Clinton is more than 90% of the way to clinching.